you're gonna grow a $386 pepper. It's gonna be the best pepper you've ever grown. I leave it up to you to what you do with it. Me, I would process it. I would turn it into a value add product. And then that's something that everybody could do because food sustainability, food security is something that we can all participate in. But you know what can make really even better progress? Like, subscribe, share, comment, ask me any questions that we can grow this channel. And I can only do it with your help. Fixing your irrigation is, an, is something you should always check when you run it. Your fertigation, you'll lose 75% of what you put in it. So you'll waste like $150 per acre on that. Check your irrigation, do it frequently. Save you a lot of heartache because otherwise you'll have bald patches like that. See where it's like nice and thick and then bald. So you can see that, ah, that's probably your problem area. Something happened right in there. Go check it out. It's really hot where I'm at. It's like, it's hot, it's cold, it's hot, it's cold, it's rainy, it's not rainy. It is what it is. Lettuce is our trial thing. Normally you only grow it when the weather is like 24 degrees Celsius and below. So some are good. So we have to constantly water. Constantly watering means you have to constantly run electricity, at least for our fertigation type, unless you have a gravity fed. You're running it, you might as well be feeding it because then you can accomplish two tasks at once. I do this YouTube channel as I don't proclaim to be any expert. Actually, I'm not an expert. Probably definitely not do what I say to do. You should do everything that I don't do. We got our second batch of Raichuan Red Jet. That's a uh, green to red seed. I'm not gonna walk in there. I was already there today. You can see that the germination on this was really good. Our methods are repeatable and consistent. We're still doing the 128. The 50 cell is probably the preferred method for your seedlings, for pepper, eggplant, cucumber, and tomato. I would do a 50 cell. It just makes a bigger plant. I'll show you in the greenhouse the difference with two weeks of growth in the field. We got holes. I got to fix that two inch pipe. Guys work on irrigation or work around it and hedge it. It's just the cost of doing business. Just make sure you always have extra fixtures and fittings. I don't. So I got to go buy some. You've been uh, fertigating and watering. It's been crazy hot and then raining and then crazy hot and raining. So, you know, it is what it is as I avoid the foot baths. So make sure you always use your foot baths wash your hands and tools. Over here is our remainder. I planted another 60 out of here. We still have a lot left over. Now, ideally I shouldn't have had this much left over when I went into here two weeks ago, when I made the call to, hey, let's, let's put these guys in the field. Let's let them go. Uh, it's time to speed up our production. That was uh, October 1st, October 2nd. We should have done uh, tighter spacing, but we'll see. Here's a little bit wider spacing. This was from the video I shot before, you can see the nice diamond pattern. And this is two weeks of growth. Every day we've done master blend. This is 128 cell. This is 50 cell. 50 cell, 128. Same nutrient program, same protection program. Even though we're having good initial success right here, everything's looking really good. We're having full sun minus the overlap of shade. That is what it is. I'm not seeing any other pest issues, but in the very back of the greenhouse. In the back of the greenhouse, it's fall, right? In fall, we get what is called fall army worms. And I think that's what these guys actually are. I can probably link pictures in the video. Um, it only is affecting the last, say, 10 meters of the greenhouse. Here we go. So they get right into there. And we've already, we've retreated this morning. Get out of there. They will take the top of your plant as I beat the crap out of this one. See, he's still hanging on. Look at him. Look at him go. Let's get him out of there. Uh, get off. Got him. All right, where'd he go? So I want to smush that little guy uh, because they will just destroy your plants. Again, we have some more leaks in irrigation. Duct tape. Simple. Easy. Just trying to slow down the thing so it's a nice even pressure across the lines. It's going to last for what it is, and then I got to replace it. If I have good success with this, I get to continue to farm, and then we get to expand more. Maybe we'll eventually finish greenhouse three, four, five, and six. <laughs> That's the goal, right? And it all depends on this crop and the crop next door. Everybody likes peppers. Everybody likes peppers. So it's one of the hardest crops to maintain. So you just have to make sure you're on top of it. That means weekly checks, weekly sprays, education, check everything. If you don't do these steps and you don't do it in a systematic way, then you're gonna have greater problems than you should. One, never mix your sweet and your hot peppers together. I think the first generation you can get away with it, but the second generations don't do it because they cross pollinate in your sweets become hot and your hots become sweets or vice versa, you never know what you're gonna get just due to pollination. I'm testing it here because I think that there's a big initiative coming down in the Philippines and globally that people are trying to use bamboo to do a lot of their projects because it's good 
and cheap and renewable resource that doesn't get enough attention as it should. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to test to see if I can just get away with doing bamboo and shade nets and just doing a bunch of these. And then if you get 10 years out of it, that's more than enough time to break even, make a bunch of mistakes and still grow whatever crop you want, whether it's hydroponically or whatever, it's just cheaper. Now, the hard part about this type of stuff is that even with treated, it, it will only last so long. So there's probably better methods to get that 25 year lifespan. But at the end of the day, your goal is accessible. We want, what's the buzzword? Food security. If you are priced out of your ability to farm because you can only plant in the field and you can't plant under protected culture. Look at the, the growth rate of these peppers that are not indigenous here, but are actually thriving under canopy. And they don't have nearly as much issues. Uh, there's very little mite. I'll show mite down there. And there's very little caterpillar. I love the pepper. This is the crinkliness of a pepper because the hotter the pepper, the crinklier the leaf. It's really weird. It's not my, it's just, it's just the type. And especially when you have like habanero or Trinidad scorpions or any of those other types of hot ones. This one is actually a nutrient deficiency where it gets that top part really crinkly. That's not mite, but that is a nutrient. That's where it's like, I don't know what to do. I don't have enough of something, so feed me more. And that's why I got a program that feeds these guys every day in the morning. So normally between uh, 7 a.m. and 10 a.m., I feed them. And then after that, it's just water. I do my normal soil amendments. You can get away with that because soil is cheaper. So back to food security. So in food security, it's much cheaper and I can get you on board because now you can grow a long-term crop, vanilla. You can grow a short-term crop and then maybe you can have something intercropped in together and then you can just do this in your plan and it'll be a lot better to produce. So that's kind of one of the things. And if you notice, the only things that I have is I have mite over there. That's what mite looks like. It makes the plant like wilt. Uh, it could be aphids. I've seen that it could be aphids as well but this is stereotypically mite where it just takes the top normally if it starts taking the top of the plant that's where you're going to have it that's also where you're going to see your viruses because you know you can you can like go back and forth and be like oh is it mosaic is that i don't care kill it replace it it's just easier that goes back to always having a backup make sure you have a backup into your plants but you can see that these guys have really thrived really well y split right here so stem not too high about six inches and then a nice y split and it's already flowered normally you could pick off that flower and let it stay vegetative but i'm not too worried about it like again under protected culture you're going to get like uh, six to ten months of growing as long as you take care of it and feed it the longer it stays in the more it's going to eat the more you need to take care of it i leave it up to you to what you do with it me i would process it i would turn it into a value add product and then that's something that everybody could do because food sustainability food security is something that we can all participate in. we don't have to be very good at it you're going to grow a 386 dollar pepper but it's going to be the best pepper you've ever grown it's been pretty good game plan for the farm kind of what we're looking at results speak for themselves hopefully i'll do a fertilizer video or i'll link other people that have done fertilizer video especially for like the apac region because sometimes in the states it's just easier to get stuff um, plus our conditions are really mimicking south florida there's a lot of stuff to learn based on what i'm i'm sharing watch my 10 minute video and it'll save you uh days to months of reading research papers of how to grow peppers how to grow vanilla how to grow lettuce how to grow any other type of vegetable is what it is see you in the next video